Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video. We have another tower machine, another uh, multimedia computer system. At least that's what the case is telling me. <laughs> so another clone uh, build here. It's going to show off on the front here. We got our uh, LG multi burner and all the other bays. Thankfully, I've got slot covers for them, so we don't have to fill them in with other stuff. A uh, pretty typical front panel here, power reset button, hard drive indicator, a pair of USB ports, and audio connector. A little bit of ventilation on the side. This panel here, I tried cleaning it as best as I could, but I was, really had trouble getting these stains off. And there's this kind of residue left on the side of the panel here, which I haven't been able to remove. And I'm not sure if it's residue or I have actually worn away some of the paint coating on it. <laughs> But uh, that being said, you know, it is what it is. It's with these older machines, you're gonna take what you get. All right, uh, power supply on the back of the system here. Uh, system board we've got is, you know, will look kind of modern here. We've got the single PS2 connector here, which could be used for either a keyboard and mouse and then USB ports for your connectors. We have onboard graphics output. I've actually got some tape over these ones here because I was wanting to make sure that wherever this goes, the people who use it actually remember to plug into the discrete graphics card. Some more USB ports, audio, ethernet, all that stuff. All right, let's open it up and show off what's inside. Got our trusty orange screwdriver here. Two side panels and the door comes off pretty easily. And we can take a look inside at what has been built. So we've got this Asus. This is an M4A785-M, if I remember correctly. Uh, the, the model number is actually underneath the PCI slot where the video card is installed. So this is an AM3 motherboard. I have an Athlon X2 processor in here. It thankfully has lots of DIMM slots here. Um, so even though it's a DDR2, based memory. I actually have four one gig DIMMs in here, so we have four gig of RAM, which is great for running a simple Windows install. And then we have this uh, Radeon, I think it's a 3850? I believe it's a 3850, yeah, HD 3850 graphics card. So this is, you know, decent for our output. And then we've got a SATA hard disk drive and then our SATA optical drive. And then our power supply here is a power link 500 watt power supply so lots of lots of juice to make sure this system is running as well as it possibly could be i'm going to put the case back together here and we will boot up into windows and show off how reasonably well it functions from a performance perspective with this older processor older graphics card obviously an older system Okay, we're all plugged into the uh, bench set up here. I'm going to hit the power button. You should immediately hear some very nice fan noise. And that is primarily... That is primarily coming from the fan on the case that's on here. It is a... What is that? An 80 millimeter, maybe a... 70 millimeter fan and it is uh pushing air quite well let's put it that way so <laughs> definitely noticeable uh but on the bright side keeping the hot air pushed out of the case so great for great for keeping everything kept cool inside the case here you saw windows booted up relatively quickly uh, and that's, you know, partially coming from the fact that the processor here is relatively powerful for its time, this Athlon X2. And having the memory installed on there at 4 gig makes up for some of the shortcomings of still having a spinning disk drive. So I'm going to open up Hardware Info here and we can take a quick look at the rest of the system specifications. So here we are with our processor information, an Athlon X2, as I mentioned. It's a 4450E. This is a two-core, two-thread, no hyper-threading on, uh, on this guy, processor. And we're running at about 
gigahertz, which is good performance. As I mentioned, a dual core 2.8 gigahertz is, is good performance for a standard Windows environment. Um, given the age of the system, of course, because we're missing some of the newer instruction sets from the last, you know, eight years or so, you're going to suffer some performance issues in, in more modern use cases. So, you know, something like this processor is not going to be good for modern gaming, but for general productivity and maybe even occasionally doing something like Minecraft or Roblox, it should be okay. Uh, paired with that, we have this HD 3850 ATI or AMD Radeon GPU. It's got 512 megabytes worth of RAM and that is DDR3 SD RAM. So again, slow memory on this one. It's able to output pretty good graphics quality, but you're not gonna be getting a lot of performance out of this when it comes to doing something like gaming. But that's not what these systems are built for. I'm putting them together to use for doing Google Classroom and simple office productivity, cloud-based applications, you don't need that type of performance uh, to, to use those simplified where most of the compute power is actually happening in the cloud. Four gig of memory, as I mentioned, those four one gig sticks that are installed. And then for drives, we've got that 160 gig drive, which is clean and in good condition, and then a DVD multi burner. So with all of that said, my primary test in terms of performance on these systems is to go and see how well it can handle doing something as simple as opening up a browser, going to a website, and maybe watching a YouTube video, just to get an idea of how long it takes for Microsoft Edge, in this case, for a Chromium-based browser to actually load up, right? It takes a couple seconds. You've got some lag there as it tries to do the work it needs to do. Then we want to go to our link for YouTube. How long does YouTube take to load up? getting all those pictures up, getting all the ads. Of course, you've got to get those ads loaded. Those are the most important part, right? And then we're going to go and see if we can run our Crab Rave. So I'm going to do a quick search for Crab Rave because I don't see it up on the front page here, which is interesting because I literally just searched for it like 10 minutes ago when I was making sure the system was running properly before doing the video. And it's the only video that this system has watched. <laughs> but it's not on the front page. All right, so let's, I'm gonna pause. I'm going to put Stats for Nerds up. We're gonna go full screen. And what I am gonna do is switch this to 720p if it isn't already. So it autoed to 720p, I'm gonna force it to 720p and I'm just gonna let it buffer. And the reason for that is um, I already know that 1080p is not gonna run well on this. And it's, it's mainly because of that processor. Even though it's a dual core processor, even though it's got 2.8 gigahertz, the fact that it's this as old as it is and the instructions that are on it, it really has a tough time. DDR2 memory with a graphics card that's got DDR3 memory, it's going to have issues. Now, that's okay to go to 720p because the, the monitor that's actually going to end up getting paired with this is a 1280 by 1024 19 inch monitor. So when you're running full screen, if I remember my resolutions correctly, it's going to run stuff at 720p in this letterbox format at that screen size anyway. So it's perfect. Anyways, let's hit the spacebar button. We'll get this running here. I want to let it fully buffer because I want to have the frames shown here be a little bit more accurate to how well it's playing back as opposed to, you know, having those initial frame rate losses as it tries to buffer the video. So just watching here, I know YouTube comp compression is always an issue. I'm not seeing any frame skips Obviously, it hasn't paused to try and like reload itself properly. We're less than 10% of frames dropped, which I think is pretty good. This tells me everything I need to know about, you know, does this system do what it needs to do? I'm going to be able to do my office productivity. I'm going to be able to do my cloud-based apps. I'm going to be able to get onto a Zoom meeting. And while I don't have a camera hooked up to this system, you know, I will be able to hook up a headset and I won't be able to go on camera, but I'll be able to watch someone else's 480p or 720p video coming through that feed without any issues at all. So I think that ends up working out pretty well. So that'll about wrap it up for this video. Hope you enjoyed checking out this rebuilt Athlon X2 based machine. I hope that you are staying safe and healthy out there and we will catch you in the next one.